It's that time again. What's up, everybody? This is Dad's Land and Fab. Hope you enjoy the show. Deuces. Boom. Good afternoon, good morning, good afternoon, good day to you all. Welcome to another episode of Dad's Lads and Kebab, episode 103. I'm going to go Three. with... How's it going, motherfuckers? You good? I, I am good. I am better you see, now. You're than, better now? Than yesterday. It's time for story time. Here we go. Jack, I like story time. Story, Jack, back. story time. Jack and Nori, yes, because this is, this is what's influenced me in the last two days jack and always so, uh jack and always uh caught me for bullshit isn't it? i don't know mate probably it used to be what well, used to watch it when i was a kid a little bear jack on the chair jack and Nori. Nori. stupid thing anyway right let's change anyway. this over yes so yesterday morning i'm driving to work nice little 12 15 minute beep, beep. trip to the old cemetery and as I'm getting close to the cemetery, I can slightly hear like a t -t 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 -t, like a little knock, very slight knock, yeah, oh, on my so. car. And I'm thinking, oh, I hope there's just something stuck, something caught there. So I get oh. to work and I have a look at my wheels or my tyres are good. I can't see anything hanging. So I thought, okay, then. So middle afternoon yesterday, I go back up. Um, because where our room is is near the toilet so i went up for a toilet uh while the funeral was on and i thought oh, i'll have another look at my car so i looked at my tires all good i actually laid on the floor and looked under my under my car at this point because it was proper daylight it was sunny and i thought oh there's nothing there no problems so i thought oh that's good then so driving home get onto the a45 leave the big mcdonald's roundabout wellingborough heading back towards northampton on the a45 i thought oh there's a couple of lorries in front of me so i, I overtake the lorries i'm now doing 70 getting past this lorry with a with a, big, We're coasting with a, that. With a big fucking jag up my ass like a big jeep so i thought fucking hell he's shifting i better go a bit faster so then i, I pull over and then suddenly i hear boop, 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 on my car yeah and i fucking swerve doing 70 into the bush and i managed to keep it keep it upright you know and i'm like what the fuck is that and all, all i can hear is <sighs> like metal on the floor and i'm thinking fuck what the fuck is that my tires were good my tires were good just now so there's a slip road off to Great Doddington on the left-hand side. The first slip road. Luckily, I was about 20 metres from that. So I pulled over into the slip road. Luckily, it's quite a long slip road. And I'm thinking, fuck, I better not get run over. So I waited for a car to go past. And I got out and I looked around. And my front passenger tyre on the floor, mate. Fucking dead as a dodo. I'm like, for fuck's sake. Like, where else could I be stuck on your carriageway? No, I can't stay on a slip road fuck that Fuck's so sake. i decided to drive the 20 yards around the corner go down the slip road and i thought there was a big open <laughs> space but that's the next that's the next slip road so for fuck's sake it's just a narrow bit so i went down the bottom turned left i thought i won't go right towards El El's barn because if i go left there's all like the industrial bit but on the way to eastern Morda, you probably remember that so yeah, i pull yeah. into like the els barton recycling center because there's a big sign but there's no there's no center there from what i can see so i pull in there loads of space so it's all good and i'm thinking fucking bollocks so i think i know i've got a, a spare in my car in my boot get the spare out get the jack out um start jacking it up take off the nuts because i can change the tire and i got to my locking wheel nut put it in put the uh the metal attachment bit kept falling off i'm thinking what the fuck so i kept putting it on and the fact that it's a, it's a lot heavier isn't it and bigger so yeah, when yeah. you're putting it on it just falls off any pressure on it falls off i'm thinking what the fuck do i do so i ring my dad he comes out after about 25 minutes and then we both i'm pushing it in while he's trying to turn it off and it's like it's just falling out of place it's like shooting across the fucking road and i'm thinking fucking hell at this point it was about about five o'clock at this point. I'd left just before four, and I'm thinking, oh, "Fuck that! I got I got shit to do, man." But I'm with Auto Home, 
for a breakdown. So my dad said, just give him a ring. You know, there are proper people that will do it. So I phoned him. Uh, nice bloke called Abdul. Big up Abdul. Um, he said, oh, I'll phone you back in five minutes to let you know where and what time someone's coming to sort you out. And um, he phoned me back within five minutes and he goes, oh, a bloke will be with you within the hour. And I'm thinking, oh, fuck, fuck for that. Like within an hour, I'm thinking like two, three hours because that's what you hear normally, a breakdown and stuff. But I suppose maybe because it's just a tyre. He goes, oh, a bloke will come out uh, and he'll change your tyre for you. I'm like, oh, thanks. So this, <laughs> I get a phone call at, I don't know, quarter past five. And he goes, oh, I'll be with you in five, 15 minutes. And he sounded like he was about 117 years old. And I thought, oh, okay, fair enough. And uh, he comes up with this big low loader, big fucking flashing lights. I'm thinking, fucking hell, I don't need that service, I'm sure. So he, he like blocks to the road. <laughs> I am actually off the road at this point, and he just fucking puts his fucking truck in it. And he comes, he comes out. He goes, "Oh, for a start, you got your jack upside down." I'm like, "Fuck's sake!" And he yeah, showed me how to put... fucking car doing that. Yeah, there's a I'll little lip. I've done it. I've done it. Yeah, I've done it. it. Yeah, I and, did. I'll uh, tell you in a minute. Yeah, he, so he he he, took, he dropped it, um, and he put my um, got his jack out. He put the locking wheel nut in the in the nut, and uh, he goes, "Oh, it just keeps falling off." So when I got a fucking hammer. Bang, bang, hopefully this works. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I mean, my dad just looking at him. And then, obviously, the one that cut the, the, the tool that comes with my car is like that big, little fucking yeah, silver yeah. thing with a bend. He brings one out fucking this big, like big, yeah. and Talk he one, goes, yeah. yeah, he goes, Oh, you want to get one of these? I'm like, All right. <laughs> he goes, I'm only 15 pounds on Amazon. I'm like, Cheers, mate. Spare it just time, helped, mate. doesn't help me at the moment. Spare time it's, mechanic. <laughs> yeah, so he, so he put it in, just turns it, and I'm like, Thank fuck for that because if that hadn't come off it looked a bit worn actually so I don't know if you can buy four new, four locking new ones of, you probably can on Amazon can't you with the, with the thingy yeah, I imagine, I imagine you just get yeah, new bolts with a new locking wheel nut yeah yeah I'll, I'll have to have a look at that anyway um, yeah so he puts his thing in jacks it up puts a, the uh, the wheel on the spare it's like, it's like that thin like my tyres are that deep yeah <laughs> And yeah, this, yeah this, space this, it's, it's like that. I've I've had spare ones before, but they've never had all the the green luminous paint on, saying fifty mile an hour. And I thought, yeah. oh, with all the with all the stripes, and I'm like, fuck's sake. He goes, oh, you wanna you wanna get the the front one as well, because the other side, the driver side. So he said, oh, that's looking quite bald, like inside. I'm like, oh, okay. He goes, oh, you you might as well get both done, and then obviously one's not out with the other one. Yeah. So I managed to get home. It's fucking weird driving a fucking, fucking little matchstick fucking tyre. But anyway, that was all right. I got home. And I've just got back from... Uh, I went to a company called AGH in Moulton Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Fucking my dad uses them all the time. They're so quick. I, I was seen within like a minute. That's where my brother works. Is it? <laughs> yeah. They're fucking well good. I, I had some like pirate looking geezer who I thought was. Well, the beard? Sta- yeah, a big long beard with smoking all the time. I thought he was going to Okay, that's not, that's, not, that's not my brother. My oh, brother's I think, a young, young looking that, guy with a beard. Yes. Has he got a beard with big hair? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, young looking. <laughs> ah, yeah. yes, I saw him. He was on the next bay. Yeah, well, they, they yeah, sorted, me, sorted me out fucking straight away. And the prices, oh my God. I was thinking like 180 each, fucking 68 quid, brand new. Obviously, nice. they're not like Michelin or anything like that, but Who they're cares? not. It's like, oh my God, the service is fucking so good. So if you're in Northampton, Northamptonshire, go to AGH Tires at Moulton Park. You guys are fucking awesome. And thank you so much. And there's my plug for this week. And Mickey's a happy boy again. Good. And you can tell your story about your tyres or whatever. Oh, you said. Yeah. Well, fuck it. I've got I've got stories about my tyres. Cars, man, are fucking they're just they're money pits that you have to keep going. Do you know what I mean? Like you can you can get and why does it always hit two a week before payday? Car trouble hits a week before payday. All the fucking yeah, time. But is, yeah. yeah. So I changed I changed the Mrs. Tire a few years ago. Um side of the road changed it yeah 
and then put the jack in, put it in upside down, twisted it. She had a Fiat 500 at the time. Um, the wheel arch where I jacked the arch underneath yeah. the passenger door where I jacked it, the metal went... <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Oh, God. That, tell you now, that car, fuck me. It did some miles, man, but we... Do you know when you feel like a car's just holding itself together now? Yeah. That that car was holding itself together, but it looked apart. It looked it was spotless. It was clean, no scratches, nothing. But everything was just when we got rid of it, we got rid of it on holiday. We were down in Devon. Yeah. We basically said, listen, the it needed new suspension, new brakes, new tires. You're talking like, I don't know, a grand's worth of work maybe, a bit more with labour and everything. Anyway, it needs so much doing. We said, we need to get a new car. Otherwise, one day this is just going to break down. So he said, well, we're here for a week. Why don't we go to a garage, dealership, try and get rid of it. We went to Vosper's garage in Devon. And basically, we said, we want a new car. We're not that bothered what it is. But you've got to turn it around within 24 hours. And... We need a new car. And they was like, that's impossible. I was like, okay, no worries. And then 20 minutes later, hold on a second. We can help you. Long story <laughs> short, he said, oh, are you, change, are you trade that in? Yeah, we're going to trade that in. Okay. He offered us way more than the car was worth. Way more. And he was like, he was like that will just go to your deposit. Okay. We don't care. Take it. Take the piece of shit. It's not even going to make it home. Yeah. Anyway, yes, we got a new car in a couple of days. Wicked got home fine. Was that the then, new... car? Yeah, the uh, yeah, no, no that's the new one. Uh, what did you that's have after new... that? This... Oh, you had the Fiesta, didn't you? The ST, yeah, S- ST, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Beast of car, it was well cool. Car. Oh, you like that, didn't you? That car, I, I fucking loved it. I thought it was well cool. Um, and then now we've got, yeah, we've got the Puma now. Mm-hmm. However, we're now, I mean, bearing in mind, I've only had it. Seven months, eight months. Yeah, done. Tw- done twelve thousand miles already. I can. Uh... Um. Anyway, had a tire incident the other week. Told you about this. Had a company come out and do it at my house because it was on a Sunday. Need car for Monday to get oh, to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Paid a hun- paid one hundred and eighty quid for the tire. One tire. Oh yes, yeah. I remember you saying that same tire. The past couple of weeks. Every time you drive and you you're on a long distance drive, we'll get an indication, come on, tyre pressure sensor mm. malfunction. Mm. So that's where that's where you put the air in. It's got a sensor yeah. on it, so it shows you how high the car is when P- it's got... The PSI levels. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's fucked. And I was like, okay, ring forward up and like, try and blag a story. I don't know what's happened, but <laughs> this has happened. Can you fix it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, he services you. Fuck. Of course, it, course it is. Of course it is. Services due. Oil needs fucking doing. Like, check my oil life. Oil life's down from, like, it's down to, like, 32%. It's so, like, fuck's sake. Over my mileage. They're going to see it when it goes in for service. I'm fucking way over my mileage. It's like, shit, we need to get a second car, man. But cars, there's fucking money pits. Yeah, they're the they worst. Are. They're the worst thing that you need, like because you're just like you've got to buy new tires. Yeah, do you know but, what I mean? And you you need to get new good ones as well. Otherwise, you know, I do a lot of, lot of long distance driving, and you want your tires. You got to be safe. You know, you are driving a killing machine if you don't have fucking tires that are reasonably good. I mean, Re- I, never, I mean, I never buy the top top notch ones because they're ridiculous price but I don't have do you remember ones with fucking super no. glue on a bit of tape <laughs> do you remember my do you remember my brakes in my Skoda I don't know I remember <laughs> it breaking I remember the battery kept dying I kept fucking jumping oh, in, but... the brakes were that bad in that car you had to pump them they went they literally as soon as you press the brakes the cars would go oh, it was lock. fucking <laughs> oh, it was, it was fu- you had to pump them just to get just a break. If you were breaking in, in like 100 meters, I'd have to slow down about 90 <laughs> meters before. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> Fucking hell. That was like my pi- first car. Do you like your yeah, Puma yet? 
You like it now? To me now, I think you just don't care about cars anymore. Yeah, I don't care. Do you know what? As long as it's, as long as it runs, it drives, plays the music. You know, it's fine. But when it is weird though, like you say, you do need you you need your car. But when you don't have your car, it's gone in for a, a random issue that needs oh. fixing, or you, like you say, tires. You can't drive where you want to go. You feel you feel lost. You feel you feel lost. I, I was I was so fucking pissed off yesterday. I was I was like shouting at my mates on the phone, like they were taking the piss out of me because I sent them a picture inside the road and I fucking I'm like fuck you, I'm fucking fuming, man. And Who's like, this? The workmates? No, it's uh, fucking rich. I was. <laughs> oh, East. you you knew he's, you knew to take the piss. <laughs> a, Mark's like, oh, poor Mickey, and Rich is like, oh, do you know what? I've had this thing in my car. Do you know? <laughs> it's like fuck you, like pretending it's him, and I can't even get my fucking wheel nut off. <laughs> it's oh, like, and it's like fuck you, fuck you. And I just you really I just, want to fuck with somebody, <laughs> steal their wheel nut because <laughs> that's like a, that's like a. That's like a prolonged joke, isn't it? If <laughs> you steal someone's locking wheel nut. <laughs> it's like, do I need to get one of them big fucking torque things now then? And also a hammer just to leave in my car in case it happens again. I mean, I don't mind changing the tyre. It's not a problem. So, if that's what that Are you used, sure? When was the last time you had your tyre changed? Uh, probably last year. Are you sure it's your, your locking wheel nut? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, they, it fits in, but it's it's quite loose. It comes out again. So what it, in the? It comes out of the wrench, or it comes it comes out of the wrench, or it, it comes out of the hole. It comes out the it comes out the bolt, the nut that's on the car on the wheel. Yeah, yeah. So it's the correct. Oh, so the, it. it's rounded. Have you tried putting pattern, it into another? What, like in the back? And, <laughs> no, yeah, in, yeah, into another wheel. Have you tried putting that locker mill nut into another wheel? No, but the just to see if that one bolt's rounded. Oh, I don't know, but one like I said, I'm gonna see if I can. If you can order them, I mean that'd be that'd be perfect. Because if you've got new new uh, edges on it, it mine looks quite worn. I mean the car's 2010, so they've been on there since its birth, really, and that's been handed down all them years. I mean I've had it since 2017, maybe 18, 17, I think. What's your mileage now? 102. So, but I got, I got my cam belt changed last year, so now I've got like another 30,000 on it. So that would do you. Now. You run cars to the ground, don't you? You just literally, yeah. Well, I don't like I don't like spending money, I don't like this lease thing where you never own your car, oh. you just like rent them for two years and then give them eight grand if you want to keep it or give it back and you can get another new one. Yeah, I don't, that's what I do, I but know. that's only because I don't, you never used to, before. though. No, no, I never did. No, no. but the, the more, the older I got, the more I give a shit about things like that now. Do you know what I mean? I don't care as long as it's safe and as long as it, do you know what I mean, does the job. I don't care what it looks like. I, I don't care. I suppose all, all new cars are, in theory, safer and more secure than the older cars. I, I, I want an older be. car. I do, yeah. I still, I, I'm st- yeah, I'm still going for a pickup truck all day long. An old pickup <laughs> truck, man. That's my dream. Long life dream is an old, beat down pickup truck. You want to get 100%. a Toyota? They never fucking die. You can't kill a Toyota. I just I want to get something that's just going to be old and just so I can do my tip runs and fucking God knows what. <laughs> bung it in the back. You get all your friends ringing you up. No, can you come and pick this fridge up for me? Just bung it on the back. This sofa chair. Fucking that's hell, man! I got I got our friends first. <laughs> <laughs> You know where I am. <laughs> oh, mate. Honestly, yeah, no. Fucking cars, money pits, mate. I tell you. They Every are. fucking time. But we'd we be lost about them. I can't be getting a bus or... I mean, I, I can get on oh, a bus, no problem, but not every day. It's not in me. Once you've had a car, that's it. You can't change. You've got the freedom of going wherever you want, whenever you Once want. you have a car, you're... Al- I know I put weight straight on about two months after having a car. <laughs> Yeah, I put on free stone when I was a van driver, just to stay awake. You, I was eating all. Day I long. would, I would literally, if someone said I'll go to the shop around the corner, I fucking drive. And I mean, I know the shops literally about a two minute walk. I'll drive there. Oh, I'm not that bad. 
10 minutes on fuck. walk. Yeah. Ah, fuck that. <laughs> I'll be like, that's what my gym membership's for, to get them steps in. Oh, I tried to cancel my gym yesterday, but I'm on a 12 month continuous contract. So, Fix lock in. Yeah, so I'm there till August. Because I thought, every day, I did like 27,000 steps yesterday. I mean, I've only done 18 today, but I was doing a bit different stuff. But it's still fucking. I did like a lot. 12 miles yesterday. <laughs> you know? And like the eight miles today, nine miles. You're just is... you're keeping your fitness up, you know. You you've that's the thing. I have to make the conscious effort now to get my steps in because I'm sat down all day. Of your job, and that, yeah. that's not. And I, I mean, on even on my lunch break, I've got you know I'll go and walk on my treadmill for like twenty minutes. I was going to say I've seen these people. They put their their desk, they build like a, a stand, put their yeah. laptop and that on it at the end of the treadmill and they, and they just walk all day. <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, I, I, I can't. My, my fucking, my treadmill is a fucking big bulky thing. It's fucking loud. It's like a continuous woo, 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 loop. Oh, okay. Like that. <laughs> um, what the fuck was I going to say? Oh, mate. I was going to say something. It'll come back to me. So, car trouble. Or, all done and dusted. Touch wood, yeah. Until no, till November. Till the next due, time. Do you for MOT and that? Yeah. Do you put? Do you put like a money aside for your car? No. I always said I should. I always said like I said it to the wife was like, we should have a pot that is just purely car fund that we put twenty, thirty quid a month in to. Don't touch it until we fucking need it for the car. Yeah, well, I used to do that when I bought my first house back in 2003. Um, I'd have, like, little envelopes, like, in the safe, and I'd have one for car, one for, like, holiday, savings, yeah, yeah. things like that, yeah. And then you end oh, up fucking God. just taking them out in the end. It's like, no, nah, I need that. You just end up saying, take away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got, that, I've got that spare fiver in there, and I, yeah, I'll take that. Oh, yeah. Then they'll take I know. It, <laughs> it, like... it, it goes from 200 quid down to like £4.50. <laughs> yeah. Did you used to save it's in like... the coin? Like the, in the big bottles, like you get JD bottles, and you put all your coins yes. in. Yes. You used to save them. Yeah, yeah. We used to have a bucket. We used to have a bucket. We used to have a jar. Change uh, I told you, man. Many of stories. Me and my brothers we used to fucking raid those jars. We used to build. We used to build them up for ages. I remember building one up for so so long, and it was just change all the time because obviously everything when it back when it was cash, you know, you'd spend twenty quid, or you'd you'd spend like twelve quid, so you'd end up with eight pound coins if they didn't have a fiver. So. I'd literally throw coin after coin in the in this bucket, and I remember taking it and getting it changed. I had like four hundred and some quid in change. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. I remember. Do you remember when two pound coins came out? Yes. Yeah, we we started saving them, putting them in. Every time we got a two pound coin, because you didn't get them all the time. Not all shops had them, but when you did get them, we'd put them in this big plastic JD bottle that you got from Studio Cards. <laughs> Studio cards, and uh, it was it was only I felt like the bottle was like this big, and it must have mm. been about this full. And there was one point it was towards the end of the month we had a big fucking. It's when we had the gas bill, and it was every three months, and we, it was higher than we expected. And it's like fuck, so we need to pay this. And we thought, fuck it, should we empty that? We got like two hundred. 48 quid or something out of it and I'm like oh my god it was only that full <laughs> it's like what the fuck mental isn't it what you can save and it's like I'd, I'd so want to do that now but I don't I do I do keep change in a certain place I'm not going to tell people in case someone robs me because it is quite ex accessible but <laughs> where um, is it Mickey <laughs> I'll see you in an hour <laughs> it's in my pants there's 20p yeah, there. that's all you're getting we'll leave, we'll leave it that. we'll leave that one but yeah so I just leave it now and when I like send off parcels and parking and stuff I'll take it with me and just use that so you know it's funny though isn't it like because now 
I, I mean, for years, fuck me, I used to live paycheck to paycheck. And by the time I'd get to, like we've always said it, like by the time I'd get to three, four days before payday, you're you're really sort of scrimping around. Yeah. And it was only till it's only till like met my wife because she's fucking she handles the finance to a tooth comb and God bless her, man, she's fucking wicked at it because I'm like, how do you know, like, how do we afford a house? She fucking helps us organize the finances and fucking sorted it all out. <laughs> but me, on the other hand, like, I used to just live month to month and I, used, I was the typical payday person. Payday comes around, I'll get, I'll pay for this, don't worry, I'll do this. And fuck me, towards the end, I was skin towards the end of the month. But yeah, now, that's like, that's like me at the moment, I'm still in that area. But once I, I get into this job properly and everything sorts itself out, it should be all right. So now it's just like, but everybody, I feel like everybody lives like that. Now. I feel like you're never, a, you're never ahead of the curve. Are you? Like, I feel like your job keeps you here and your finances keeps you here. And you'll never, you'll never go like, Oh, my finances are really good this month. And I've got fucking hundreds left. Yeah. You know, I feel like I can get, I feel like I'm getting paid what I deserve from the job that I'm working. And there's always something comes up when you finally think, oh, I'm actually doing well now. Like your tires so, will fucking break and your car breaks down or your, your telly smashes or your cooker f f stops working or your washing machine. It's like, for fuck's sake. I feel like that's what it's like, though. I feel like how do you, how does one better themselves in terms of your finances if you're literally paying for everything that you need to and at the end of the month you've got fuck all left? That's, you know, finances, I feel, I feel like finances should be taught to kids in schools. Basic finances, financial decisions, Tax, have you got savings? Stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, like, because I remember the first time I ever got taxed, I was livid, <laughs> fucking livid that somebody had took my money <laughs> and I was like, I'm not paying it. I'm not paying it unless it doesn't work like that. You have to pay it. <laughs> like, yeah. Did they do half my month? <laughs> They I'm worked like, half my they, job. <laughs> did they come to work with me? Did they do my shifts? Did they do my overtime? Because I remember when we used to do a lot of overtime, you know, when we used to do back in the day, we would do, and I'm not talking like a few hours, you would do technically 45 hours overtime because you'd do a full day shift, you'd do a full night shift, another day yeah, shift. A couple of sleepings, yeah. You'd do a lot. And then you come to the end of the month and your ta your taxes would punish you for <laughs> doing overtime. Yeah. It's like, hold on a second. This company need me to fulfill those hours because they need somebody to cover that. However, you're not reaping that, those financial rewards to commit in your time. And I mean, bulks of your time, not just a couple, oh, stay for a couple of hours. No, bulks of your time, your nights, your days, everything in between. Weekends, away from your family and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And you wouldn't, I would never see a great, I'd never go, fuck me, I did really well this month. Because the tax, sometimes I was getting taxed at like £800 a month. Yeah, like yeah, total yeah. deductions at like 800 And it's like, what's the point? <laughs> fuck that. I, I found in the end, there was a balance of overtime. Of, there was a balance of, if you do this amount of hours, yeah. snip it over and i'm talking 20 30 hours over you could see that you would it would reflect in your wages anything yeah, over that yeah. they'd take the chunk and it would be like how how do you better yourself how do you do how do you get more money if you're working all the hours you can but yeah the more hours you work the more you get taxed crime this pays my friend that's what it is crime pays they don't pay tax. <laughs> Honestly, you like I said, we said weeks ago. Like you're now getting charged. You're paying tax if you start selling your start selling your old clothes on fucking vintage, vintage and Depop. And, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. You get tax for that. Eventually, car boot sales will be massive this year. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking will be queuing to get in. I bet people will do though. People do that. That's probably the only place now where you can still make cash money. Yeah, I, I don't know what I don't know what the answer is. Well, I do know what the answer is, but 
I'm not allowed to say it because I'll get put in prison. So it's not an answer I can say. No, but I'm just talking. The thing is, I'm talking about just a normal working man, working woman, working family. Yeah, but it all comes down to tax and what the tax is used for. So if there is extra things that the government need to pay for, your tax is going to go up because they need to pay for it. Mm. While they're getting tax, they're getting money on the fucking side from other countries for doing stuff in our country. So, Fuck hell, man. yeah, that that's the thing is that's nothing to you know. I always say that's nothing to do with the you know with the everyday man that no, we have not. no control Defi- over. Def- definitely not. No, we're just trying to it's earn money like, to to live a good life for your family and your friends. And I stuff. feel like all these financial companies as well. I mean, you there's there's a company called you've heard of Klarna, haven't you? Where you can yeah pay for it. Pay for monthly installment. I've used it loads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You th- spread it over three months. So you want to pay for something big, spread it over three months. It works really well if you can afford it. However, what people are doing is planning now. So if you want to, you go onto a website and you go, I want to buy a seven hundred pound camera, right? Yeah. You and you thought I want to buy it. Rather than paying it in three installments, you can just pay it in thirty days, and they'll send it to you. There, they'll send it to you. The order will complete it'll be delivered within three or four days. However, you the end of that 30 days, you're like, you don't account for that. I've noticed so many people, I've seen so many videos on people like, owing oh, thousands to these companies like Clearpay, Klarna, fucking Monzo, Pain 3 or whatever they are. Like, you can end up in some serious shit with it. So if you don't that, make the payments. How does that work then? What, they don't send it out until you pay for it? Or you could just pay in full anyway, there and then, no? No, no, they, no, no. They do send it to you. You can pay. So you, or you, can, the order completes, and they send it to you. Okay, and you haven't paid nothing you, yet. Yeah, you don't pay anything until thirty days after. Uh... The, after, so it works in some sense. However, it's it's a trap for some people that will see. Oh, I, I, de- I really want this, but I can't afford it. But I want it anyway. You know, like you, mm. you wanted a new, you wanted a new phone because I think Klarna you can get a purchase up to a thousand pound and pay it in thirty days. Who's going to pay that in a, a grand out your wages? You get like ten pound left. <laughs> That's what I mean. But people do it. I've seen so many people, like so many videos of people do it. See, Amazon do that. They for certain things. I was looking at um, a new GoPro for filming and stuff. And because what I do when I upgrade cameras, I buy a new one and sell all my old stuff because I've normally got like 20 batteries, all the accessories. So it still sells for basically what I'm paying for the new one mm-hmm. um, on eBay and that. And I was looking at a GoPro on, on Amazon and you can, you can, on Amazon, they offer you payments. So many. Uh, you can bark the card. Yeah, yeah. It's the, no, not not that one. I'll get onto that. So like six, six to eight months. You can do it. It's, they advertise it. Five installments, I think it is five months um and i'm like that's good then and then you click on it um paying installments and the only one that's available is barclays now i've used barclays before um i bought a drone and i paid like 113 pound for three months which is fair enough um so i've got good credit with them so blah 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 so i got a gopro the other month um i pay 83 pound in three installments then I, I, I could have I could have paid for it on my credit card all in one, but I thought, what's the point? I think I paid like yeah. two pound interest or something over the three months. Yeah, 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 you don't pay a lot, but as long as you can make the payments. Exactly. Yeah, eighty three pound is fine. It's uh, it's all good. It's, but it's you know. just I feel like there's a part of society of you know that's the thing. That's why I don't give a shit about anything anymore, material wise, because. No. nothing I want warrants the money. You know, I always, I always feel like if you want something and you're willing to put it on your credit card, then you can't afford it. No. If you want something and you can afford to pay it outright, then yeah, you can afford it. But the sensible thing is you, you could afford it, but you split it over three months because why not? You know, I, I need the cash now. I don't need to lose yeah. that much money in one go. That's but you can with, afford to make the payments. Same with like people with their car insurance. Like some people pay monthly, some people pay it for the whole year. I've never ever understood why people pay for the whole year. Because I don't miss Doesn't... like forty pounds a month. But I'm gonna miss like 
a grand, you know, yeah, at yeah. once. That's you know, you pay you pay a little bit more, but if you don't if you're not missing it month by month, then I'd rather do that. I mean, it's like my car tax. I pay like I think it's twenty one pound a month now. It used to be eighteen. Yeah. Ba- bastards. But instead of I bastards. pay that it's in, instead of paying what like two eighty or whatever it is for the year, I'll pay it twenty one pound. Mm. I'm not going to miss that. What about your TV license, Mickey? I don't, I don't pay that. I live with my mum and dad. They pay it. <laughs> oh, if oh. I did have a house, I wouldn't fucking pay it. Let me tell you now, because I don't technically have telly. Oh, I'm on streaming, so and I don't want to. That will come soon as well. That will come. That will yeah. come soon. Where I just feel like you just you you don't, especially as a general sort of working person, you don't really. Like I, obviously it's not it's not all the government's fault. It's our fault too. Like you don't realise. Like I have every. I've said this before. I have every single streaming service under the fucking sun. So I've probably got about. I've got my own Sky package basically, from mm. fucking Discovery, Prime, Netflix, Disney Plus, Paramount Apple. Plus, <laughs> yeah, Discovery Plus, Apple yeah. TV, like with my Apple music, that's like, yeah. that's like 50, 60 quid in, in subscription. <laughs> like, yeah. So you, like you we all waste money. Like, but it's like, I always think if I live the way I live, like the, the, you live the way you live for the next 30 years until you retire. I don't think retirement now is possible for a working man, unless you've got some, you know, you've been hard saving for years or you've been paying into private pensions or you've got property or this, that and the other. Like, mm. what's retirement going to look like for a general working man that doesn't own his own home, that lives paycheck to paycheck? Because how do you, how say if you had nothing, right? you retire, you've got nothing. You've got everything, you've just lived your life, enjoyed it, you haven't saved, you haven't put money into a property. You live your life. And then you get to say retirement age, whatever it's going to be by the time we hit retirement age. Mm. It'll probably, it'll be, I think it'll probably be about 80 for you, probably about 99 for me. The last time I, I was told, like about 10 years ago, it was 68 from 65. So it had gone up, gone up three years. But who knows? I don't know. Can you live on I mean, something what, like that? State pension. I wouldn't, you know. Well, I, well, I've had pensions from all my jobs as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but then... The thing is with that is they're not enough to pay you living expenses, are they? <laughs> but at the same time, like they're not enough for you to do anything with your retirement. If you said like, you know, I want to go and travel the world now. I've done my life. I've done my jobs. I want to go and do this. Mm. Can you can you realistically afford to go and do it? Probably not. No. It's mental. It, it is what it is, isn't it? Talking of talking of money, I have my my car tax renewal come through on Sunday, which is a weird day. Yeah. And it was it was five hundred and something a month. Um, a year my car That's tax. a lot. That's gonna be fucking out. <laughs> what am I driving? And uh, and I, so I thought I don't want to open this email because I've heard friends of mine on Facebook saying that theirs went from like 400 a year to 1800 a year. Obviously they drive different cars, but you know, the, the, the increased hike is fucking huge. So I'm thinking, Oh my God. But yeah, mine's gone up to 750. So it's like a hundred and something extra a year. So it's about 16, 17 pound a month. So I'm thinking, Oh, that's not too bad. I was, I was worried because you hear the stories in the press, that they've they're tripled, doubled for most people. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I was <laughs> I'm quite happy with that. I'm leaving that. At least you don't drive an electric man. Oh, they'll be they're saying they're gonna tax them as well, wouldn't they? So Eventually, yeah, eventually. But however, I did you see the thing last week that I've seen a lot of videos on it and um an electric car is now classed as a disposable unit because once the battery's fucked on an electric car, once it's done, you can't yeah. do anything with it. It's just a shell. You, you can't re-energize it. Like, lithium. It's just fucked. So it's a disposable vehicle. So I seen a guy that had um he had an electric Porsche, 
right? Mm. And he had it, he got it, dream car, he wanted it so bad. Had it for a year and was like, right, it's time to get something now, more practical. Went to take it, went to trade it back in. And they were like, we don't want it back. It doesn't, it's not saleable for us. You know, it's used, battery's used. I'm sorry, yeah, exactly. Who's going to buy a second-hand car with a second-hand battery unless you can replace the batteries, which I've heard they can on a Tesla, but everything's but what's possible the health? on a Tesla. If you, if you buy an electric car, how do you know what the battery health is? So even, I, I guess, because how do you compare mileage to battery health? Like, you could have a battery, you could have, a, you could have an electric car, and you could have it a year, you could have fucked that battery within a year. You don't know that. Yeah, depending on how you charge it, how you drive it. You yeah, know, yeah. Has it got you could memory? Have you know, has it got battery memory? It, it, you don't really know in that, how, what condition that battery is in. You could take it off the forecourt and the battery could be fucked. You know, you could it could have been sat stagnant for a year before it sold. Do you know what I mean? All these did, things. Did you notice how the government changed it all cars need to be at least a hybrid on 2030. Now they've changed it to 35, haven't they? Because they're realizing that there's no way in hell that the, the government can fit all these charging points all over the country. Or convince people to buy electric cars or hybrids. We, we, we had free at work. Let's just say one was, one was a mocker, a Vauxhall mocker. It had about 125 mile range, which was fucking pointless. The other one was a Nissan Leaf. It had about 140, 50. That was a nice car, actually. And then a Peugeot Summit or other. Um, yeah, pretty much the same. And I thought, if you're not getting a range of at least 200 pounds, 200 pounds, 200 miles, what is the point? But then you've got to go... branch up into Mercedes, BMW, Tesla for those ranges. You ain't getting those on a low range. Who buys a thirty thousand pound fucking Vauxhall Mocha that you can do one hundred and twenty five miles? Come on! It's fucking ridiculous. Why would you do it to yourself? Well, what they and do, then, they 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 get them for this this for motorability, so they'll get them that way. Because yeah, because they're, they're not doing that many miles, or they're not no, expected for, to do that for many disabled miles. adults and that. Yeah. Yeah, which is you know, but, for, it's, it's but fine. for you and me, you say, "Oh, sorry, sorry, daughter, can't take you to the seaside. I can only get halfway." And then we have got to wait six hours to charge it at a petrol station. <laughs> service station, and, yeah. and then, and then by then it'll be dark by the time we get there. When we get there, we we'll have to charge it again just to get halfway home to charge it again at three in the I'm morning. Telling you, and I'll get they home. They could lease. They could, if they're going to do that, and you're going to have to sit at the service station a lot more. They can at least bring little chef back, just to make it worth your while. Yeah, I used to like those chef. Just bring it back, and then it'd be worth your while to have your car. But yeah, so these cars are now classed as disposable vehicles because these big companies, BMW, I don't know, fucking Mercedes, Porsche, whatever, they don't want them back because it's like, well, it's used. Like, yeah. So you're, you're fucked. It's different in a petrol tank. You can just put more petrol in it or diesel in it. But like, you can't, you can't remake the battery. Though, these people put their faith into I'm going to get an electric car but I want a, I want what is classed as an exotic electric car you know and then it's then it's fuck and then also I know I'm talking a bit end of the world shit here but what if what if we do start having blackouts you ain't what are you charging then what are you doing <laughs> you're not I charging did. shit <laughs> you can always get fuel <laughs> do you know what I mean you can you can store fuel you can't store batteries you know, no. solar panels are not going to charge a car. No, just a like, radio in that, isn't it? Aircon. Well, but that's the thing, though. Mental. When we went to the seaside last year, well, I didn't go. Someone else did at work. And this is the story I'm telling you about. They got, they were in the Nissan Leaf, and they went. They were going to Yarmouth from where we used to work, and yeah, they got halfway and had to stop to charge it. Um, basically. They charged it, and then when they got to the destination at Yarmouth, it was dead. They were down to about 20 miles, and they said there was a charging um, station at Tesco, a big Tesco Extra, just about maybe seven miles away, so they drove there. It wasn't working. They plugged it all in. It was not working. 
So if for some reason it was issued. So then they didn't have 13 miles left. They had about six miles left on the range because obviously how they drove, obviously slower traffic, not long Driving distance. Driving slow, yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, basically they had to, what you can, what can you do? You can't tow it. <laughs> so what they had to do, they had to, luckily they knew somebody that lived, friend of the friend lived at Yarmouth and they managed to, to get it, um, get it charged because they lived around the corner. So they managed to drive it to their house and then it broke. <sighs> someone from work went there and the pe the actual staff went home they got home like nine ten o'clock at night and then the person whose friend it was they went there they got they had to stop at 3 a.m on the way home to charge it again for another hour just to get it back to to work and it's like this so this is the example i'm using i mean there may be others that are a lot better I, it's it, it, it's not it scarred everybody like the guys didn't spend all day on the beach; they're in a fucking Weatherspoons because they couldn't get there. <laughs> it's like what the fuck? It doesn't sell it for me. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't sell. I should get an electric car. You know, no. I get it. I get it. They, you know, they move. They sound quick. good. They, well, do they though? I well, don't they, they don't they sound just... anything. When I was waiting to get my tires done tonight, there was a, a DHL lock <sighs> van pulled up and i thought how are these vans gonna last you need to drive like 10 11 hours a day we can stop every fucking couple of hours and charge it <laughs> oh, productivity right pro productivity will go down because which means you're then, not on they the need more vans to do the job they need more drivers which means they're going to charge the customer more which means people aren't going to use dhl because and they're, over, obviously they're overcharging all the lithium mining like i don't i don't really it's in like brazil and stuff like that isn't it? And them sort of how long how long's that gonna last before they say hold on a second we're doing more harm than good here yeah i mean i don't know how it's made in the earth is it just like finding coal or is it is, is it renewable though no do you know what i mean like like they stock coal and <laughs> There's still coal in the ground. Those. I know, it's still coal everywhere, yeah. We still have it for barbecues. <laughs> probably different coal, but you know, it probably does the same thing. I love it how everything, every, like, I believe now everything has a shelf life. Your job, anything that you have has a shelf life. Like, 50 years ago, if you was a coal miner, you would have thought, this is this job's never going to end. Yeah, like, it's always coal. Yeah. People need it. They use it for heat, everything coal constant coal needed for trains and everything else then all of a sudden it's like nah we're not using yeah. that anymore literally what we're going to do with all the people ah fuck them off just get rid of them close it all down bring margaret thatcher in <laughs> fuck me just close it all down fuck them they don't, they don't need anything from us it's just, everything's got shelf life fucking vehicles man like cars yeah, are only going to last you so long even even the the bin lorries are now they've got an electric one. Yeah, got yeah, one yeah, electric yeah, bin lorry. I thought that might last a day driving around like the streets for like four hours or whatever they drive around. That might work and get back. I'm I'm still not sold on it. I'm still not sold on all sorts of things. But I you know I'm like with rabbit holes and wormholes that I fucking fall down. So the new one for me this week, let's call it, this is going to be a new, new thing for our show once a week, Niles rabbit hole. <laughs> so I've looked, I was looking at something called geoengineering, which is weather that is basically, do you know, have you heard of chemtrails? Yeah. Chemtrails, chemtrails, chemtrails chemical yeah. trails. I feel, I, I start to believe it. The other morning, when, what, day was, what day was it? What day was it? It's not that, but it's 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 basically geological engineering, so they can engineer the weather. Like the other, there was another. What morning was it? Sunday morning. That you did you wake up and it was bright blue skies. What morning was it? No, it was, it was morning piss, this week. It was pissing it down Sunday morning, and then by about nine o'clock, the sun was out. Really bright. No, no, yeah. There was a there was a morning past few days. Saturday. No, it was Saturday. I woke up, literally pulled back the curtains. I was like, fuck me. Bright blue skies everywhere. And then you just notice straight white lines everywhere. 
And I was like, oh, there's a lot of flights today. Yeah, because you think it's from the airplanes. Yeah. Like the natural, the natural stuff that comes out, the fuel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You think it's on planes, and obviously it's not. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not into the conspiracy theory that we're all being poisoned. No, that's an American thing. Like, I think that's not. I'm not really like, I'm not I d- into that. I just feel like you wake up, you look at the weather, you go, oh, "It's a lovely day." An hour later, and it was literally entirely grey, black, <laughs> fucking. And I mean, how long have we had shit weather for now? And I mean, sh- just. Yeah. Gloom, not not rain or anything, or not cold, but just gloom. The last two weeks has been alright because I hate it when it's wet because everything's dirty and the graves fill up. So I'm loving mm. that the sunshine, or at least no rain anyway. But they they can create rain. They do it in Dubai, so they tell everybody. I saw videos this week. Dubai is like flooded at the moment. Flooded, yeah. Yeah, because they what they do, they, they pass over aeroplanes and they drop these things into the, the air and then obviously it absorbs into the clouds, creates rain. So they, they need it for certain times of the yeah, year. So that's geological engineering. So yeah. it's it's engineering the weather, which could have an effect, which could have a positive effect in years to come because... In hot countries, I when, believe it would. In most, I mean... Come summer in these countries, come summer where we are, uh, yeah. you know, we already know that when British summer hits, it's hotter than it's ever been now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's it's hot. Is that normal? Probably not. Uh-huh. You know, how many people out there still say global warming's a myth? It's like, you're fucking mental. The weather's definitely changed. Yeah. Oh, Speaking are you of- ready for summer? Uh I don't know. It is what it is when it happens. So at least I can wear a t-shirt, get brown. I think I'm already quite brown at the moment. My face. Do you get shorts in your uniform? Do you no, think? I'm not allowed shorts because uh, obviously we use chemicals for weed killing and strimming. Mm, oh shit! Yeah. Grass. Yeah. We, we could get anything. We could get cuts and stuff on our legs and hurt ourselves. So Lyme least, disease and all sorts of shit. Yeah, the Ticks material. Stuff. Yeah, from uh, obviously from the soil is contaminated dead flesh body parts at some stuff so hepatitis b apparently is in the ground so i need to be careful of that can you have a shot for that yeah tetanus but i no, but te- can you a hepatitis you can yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but he- but uh i believe tetanus should cover that anyway That's what okay. I mean, so but talking of change did you see the fake princess kate walk in today on the news Oh, this is another rabbit hole. Yeah, I, I've seen it. I've seen it all over the fucking press today. And I'm thinking, well, that don't look like Kate. There's nothing like Kate. Absolutely nothing. One thing I want to say is, why is there a Christmas brief up where at that farm shop they're at? And also, why is Prince Prince William fat as well when he's walking? Because... Honestly. There's no way you're telling me that woman in the middle... It's like Kate on the right or the left as you're looking at it. She ain't lost oh, like sixty pounds in a couple of weeks. That is not I mean, the same woman. Could have. Yeah, but come on. She's all she's all she's already very, very thin, isn't she? She's very Yeah, but thin. she has certain features that are very pronounced. Like well, she's a mole. She's a mole, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah. But I don't know. I honestly my this, there's so much about them at the moment. And that's They've the got problem. The, the, the child that Prince William has with her friend Rose. And it's like, oh my God. I just, for me, it's like... <laughs> it's just like his dad. <laughs> I feel like I feel, I feel like it's a media frenzy that... It's clickbait, isn't it? It started off... It started off very, very small. And it's just took the world by storm. Because... And do you know what? I hope, I really hope they're sat back going, let's carry this on. Let's just let them keep going. <laughs> Set the, the, setting the doubles out. <laughs> why should why should they give a fuck about what people fucking think? Exactly. But you see, the, the thing uh, I do, I do understand when, when she was supposed to have edited that photo, Kate. Yeah, that was weird. Week, that was yeah, weird. There was so, one thing that is going to, cause a, a frenzy throughout the world's media 
is the fact there's a story about your husband, the future king, and one of your friends that you've known, mm. you've gone on holiday together. Where the fuck is your wedding ring? If you're going to fake your picture and, and, and this, take bits out. No, no, he doesn't pitch, no, but the picture that she was in with her kids. Mm, didn't they, the ring. Yeah, yeah. She didn't put the ring on. Now, whether it wasn't on, but if it's something you don't miss, you do not miss the wedding ring because everybody's going to pick up on that. So it's so oh, weird. I feel, though, it's so fucking weird at the moment. I feel that the obviously I I noticed all the bits that everybody picked out, all the obviously the edited bits that everybody picked out. I I seen them all. However, the one for me that stood out was her herself. I don't feel. I don't know. I don't feel that she was in that photo. Everything to me screams. She, there's a that's a generated photo that's been put there, and those objects have been put around it. Could well be. But they said I, that, I she, don't believe... that she took the photo and she edited it, but it wasn't very good. But obviously, she she did photography for many years. But I suppose that doesn't mean to say you're good at editing. So you know, who knows? But then at the same time, though, imagine putting something out to the world. Surely that goes. Surely if you if you're a royal and you post something, surely it must go through a whole editing team before it goes. Of course, out. it does. It it goes through and this not... person, then this person, this department. I'm not just thinking someone goes, oh, yeah, that looks good, send it out. Like, they'll full-on study it, and they will full-on go, yes, you can, that's, you know, that's been approved, it can go out. Yeah, of course because it is. Obviously, the whole, the BBC have said nothing. Like, everyone's waiting for this BBC announcement. Of course they're not. Like, I've heard that. I heard a couple of videos on TikTok about that. BBC announcement. They haven't, they haven't said anything. They're not yeah, expecting they're... any announcement. Yeah, these photographers in the streets saying, oh, we're just waiting for it. It's going to be big news, big royal announcement. They were, they were also, saying it was going to be their divorce. And I thought, do you know how difficult it was for Charles and Diana to get divorced? It took fucking months and years for the constant asking the Queen, just let us divorce, let us divorce. She said no, but maybe Charles is a bit easier. I don't know. But then I think they're giving, they're giving him a rough ride as well, aren't they, for literally I. Yeah. Bottom line of it, he's a sick man. Right? He's ill. Of no matter is. where you want to put, no where you want to put him on the illness scale, he's ill. Have some respect to that. But for me, you can you can make stories up, and if that if that's your bag, and you fucking that's how you get views on your videos by making up fucking stories. Like, but have some respect. You know what I mean? Especially, I I, I mean I am patriotic, definitely hundred percent. You know. He's our king at the end of the day. Have some mm. respect. Stop, stop, stop posting shit that you know nothing about. Just put your None granddad in, in that place, you know. Would you Would you be talking shit about your granddad? Or would you like other The thing is, to... none of us know. Anybody can, anybody can post a video. Anybody can post a video with their own conspiracies. Mm. But the truth is, do you know? Do you fuck? You know nothing. You know what they provide you. Especially when it comes to the royal family. Like, you only see what they want you to see. Mm. Of course it is. Yeah. Like, pe people speculate all the time, like, oh, she's had an affair, he's had an affair. Really? Do you know, though? I don't think so. Nah. We're never you make everyone... Know. Everybody makes up their own narrative to make it all look bad. It'll all come out. It'll come out eventually. Or w what will come out will be, you know, a version of the truth that you're allowed to see. And that'll be it. And then everyone will just get on with their lives and make up some other, make some stories about the next person. Yeah. Fuck no. Oh, mate, we've had a bit of a rant this episode, haven't we? We've had a bit of a not a rant, but just a lot of discussion. Yeah. It's not been very unusual in, in depth. I like it because you can't always be I you like know, it. Niall, Niall's death mythology. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. being fucking, we've had a bit of a bit of a discussion. Yeah, it's yeah good. I like it. What a nice it's episode. Good. Yeah, and last week's episode's going down very well. Having Thank Paul you for one watching, as our guest. we really appreciate the, it. The, the views on our YouTube video are being, Fwah! you know, he's got a lot of following. So, <laughs> cheers, Paul's Paul, following the ghost connoisseur, get the grave connoisseur. Grave connoisseur. It was a good yeah. chap, actually. He was a good man. It was, yeah, he, was, it was, he was definitely a good, good sport to have on. It was, it was a good episode. I watched that a couple of times this weekend, just on YouTube. And I think, oh, it's, it was good. And also, when he, 
We need some more five stars people on the audio platforms. Right, we need some more guests. Five stars. We do need more, more guests. guests. Yeah. I want more guests. Do you know what? Let I think maybe that should be my mission because I need to find as a guest. I've had about six or seven guests on now. I know you're always good at getting guests as well. I will find as a guest. I'll get as Kirk Norcross. I'll get. It. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. I think. I think I could reach out to somebody close to him to get his friend on. I don't even know his friend, but he's with his friend a lot lately. I'd love to have a chat with him because he seems a very interesting bloke and a very interesting life. Yeah. yeah. I'll see. I've got somebody that I could reach out to and hopefully get someone on. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining us on another episode of Dazzle and Kebabs, episode 103. Peace out, motherfuckers. Deuces. One way or the other, fuck off. See you later. Bye. Woo!